this is the second part of our discussion where we will consider the case of integration of complex valued functions of one variable over the real interval a to b now in this uh, module we will discuss some further properties of uh, these integrals so integrals of the type that you can see on the screen where uh, f of t is a complex valued function of one variable and we want to uh, integrate it on the real interval a to b now let's recall our uh, previous module if we have this function f of t is equal to u of t plus out of v of t then we can integrate this function over this closed over this closed interval a to b in the following way so u of t so just integrate u of t from a to b just integrate v of t from a to b and then we can evaluate this integral now uh, let's uh, uh, move on to explore properties of uh, this integral now there is very complicatedly appearing property but it is kind of very simple property so it says that the real part of uh, this integral is equal to the integral of the real part which is uh, kind of very apparent from the definition as well okay so it says that uh, if you evaluate this thing then uh, after evaluation this is going to be uh, the real part and this is going to be the imaginary part and uh, this real part is basically uh, the same as evaluating uh, or integrating the real part of f of t so what is real part of f of t u of t so this uh, statement uh, then makes sense so the real part of this which is basically a to b u of t dt is equal to a to b okay so what is real part of f of t so u of t so u of t dt so it's a it's a very kind of trivial statement but uh, sometimes it is very useful in our discussion and uh, of course similarly we can say the same for the imaginary part so imaginary part of this integral is equal to the integral of the imaginary part okay so uh, this is uh, uh, true only uh, when we are integrating a com uh, complex valued function of one variable over this real interval a to b now uh, let's move on to further properties of this integral so if we have uh, two functions f of t is equal to u of t plus out of v of t and another uh, function g of t is equal to p of t plus out of q of t and if we want to uh, integrate the sum of these two functions then it is the same as integrating them separately and then adding them so this property is exactly the same property as we have seen in calculus of one variable case where we integrate function of one variables on uh, interval a to b now why uh, there is uh, such similarity between these two cases uh, the the reason is very simple because we are evaluating this integral using two real integrals okay so uh, first integrating the real part and then integrating the imaginary part so it is due to this reason that uh, we are uh, we, we we can see some similarities between calculus of one variable uh, case and these uh, integrals of complex valued functions of one variable now moving on to other properties if we have a function and we want to integrate it from point a to b and if d is some uh, other point between a and b then we can uh, divide this uh, integral into two parts in the first part we will integrate f of t from a to d and in the second part we will integrate f of t from d to b and once again exactly the same property as we have seen uh, for the integration of uh, real valued function of one variable now moving on uh, to the fundamental theorem of calculus and uh, um, not very surprisingly it is uh, basically the same as we have seen in calculus uh, of one variable case for the real integrals and uh, what does it says if we have a function f of t which is continuous and uh, uh, capital f of t is also continuous such that f prime of t is equal to f of t then the integral f of t dt from a to b is going to be equal to f of b minus f of a okay so that's a, a fundamental theorem of calculus and we use of course we use this thing to evaluate our integrals now uh, let's have a look at, at some very simple consequences of this uh, fundamental theorem of calculus if we have uh, this function uh, f of t and uh, such that this uh, f prime of t is continuous of course this is the necessary condition uh, uh, to implement or to use 
fundamental fundamental theorem of calculus so if it is continuous then the integral of f prime of t from a to b is going to be equal to f of b minus f of a and uh, of course uh, in this case when i say uh, continuous it means uh, we have to use the definition of continuity of complex valued functions of one variable now uh, moving on to uh, other properties so uh, this is this is a kind of uh, bridge between uh, integral of a uh, complex valued function and two real integrals and uh, if you remember uh, in the last module uh, we evaluated uh, an integral using two real integrals and uh, this is the integral that we uh, discussed in our last module and uh, if you remember that uh, it was a kind of uh, complicated task to evaluate two real integrals now um, as I have uh, told you in the previous module as well that this bridge between the integrals of complex valued functions and two real integrals it's a two-way connection so in this uh, uh, discussion we will see that how we can use uh, these integral of complex valued function uh, to simplify the integration of our real valued function okay now let's first recall what is the connection between the this integration of complex valued function and two real integrals so these are uh, the two real integrals that we need to evaluate if we want to evaluate this integral but now our advantage is uh, we now know some properties of uh, complex integration which of course we have derived using the properties of real integrals but now we can use those properties to evaluate this uh, complex integral independently uh, without evaluating these real integrals and uh, if we can evaluate this uh, this uh, uh, integral this integral of a complex valued function independently then this will help us in finding the values of these two real integrals now let's see how to evaluate this complex integral without evaluating the two real integrals okay now uh, the point is we need to find a function such that when we take uh, the derivative of that function then we get this function okay so that uh, uh, that function is basically uh, the integral of this function and uh, if we consider this capital f of t is equal to 1 over 1 plus iota e raised to power t 1 plus iota and then if we take the derivative of this function then it is going to be exactly exponential of t plus iota t so we can say that this uh, exponential of t plus iota t dt from 0 to pi by 2 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus iota e raised to power t 1 plus iota and t is equal to 0 to pi by 2 okay so uh, this is application of fundamental theorem of calculus so once again we derived properties by using the properties of real integrals but now we know these properties and by implementing and using these properties we can evaluate the complex integrals independently and uh, this is kind of uh, our main uh, power in this case okay so this is going to be equal to 1 plus iota iota e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 so if we simplify this thing then it is going to be equal to 1 over 2 1 minus iota iota e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 so i'm uh, just skipping the middle steps so but this is this is very simple calculation so this is going to be equal to iota e raised to power pi by 2 plus 1 so we can evaluate this thing so basically we use the fundamental theorem of uh, fundamental theorem for complex integrals uh, that uh, we uh, derived using the fundamental theorem of calculus now uh, what did we achieve uh, in this case so our achievement is very non-trivial in this case because uh, this integral is equal to the sum of these two real integrals 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t cosine t dt plus iota 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t sine t dt but we also know uh, by using fundamental theorem uh, that uh, of complex integrals that we just uh, 
discussed that this is going to be equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 plus iota by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 plus 1 and by comparing these two uh, expressions we can easily see that this implies 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t cosine t dt is going to be equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 minus 1 and similarly the integral 0 to pi by 2 e raised to power t sine t dt is going to be equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power pi by 2 plus 1. So and remember we we found this answer uh, using 3 4 steps and the, the integration in this case is very very simple okay so uh, using this very simple integration we just evaluated two real integrals which are relatively complex to integrate if we just uh, use the techniques of uh, calculus of one variable now although uh, there are very similarities there are there are many many similarities uh, between uh, the integrals of complex uh, valued functions of one variable and the real integrals but then uh, there are some things which are uh, different in these two uh, words okay now let's have a look at some of the properties which are different so uh, the first property which is different is the mean value theorem so the mean value theorem for real integrals of course hold for the real integrals but it doesn't hold for the integrals of complex valued functions of one variable over the real intervals now what is mean value theorem uh, so the mean value theorem says that if we have a continuous function on a closed interval a to b then there exists a value c such that uh, the value of this integral is equal to h of c multiplied by b minus a so uh, the geometrical idea is very simple in this case so we know that the integral of a function h of x is basically the area under the graph of this function and above x axis from point a to b so the idea is we can always find some kind of uh, mean from uh, point a to b so in this case the mean is c such that if we uh, take height or uh, uh, basically one side of a rectangle to be h of c so this is one side of uh, uh, this rectangle and the other side is a minus b then the area of this uh, uh, rectangle is the same as the area under the graph of h of x and above the closed interval a to b so uh, the equality of these two areas is represented by this equation so the integral so this integral is area under the graph of the function and this number is basically uh, one side of a rectangle with the other side okay so just multiply uh, these two sides and you get the area of the rectangle and uh, so this mean value theorem says that there is always a mean value c such that this holds but uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately it is not the case in the case of uh, integrals of complex valued functions so the mean value theorem for real integrals does not hold in the case of real integrals of complex functions over the real interval now uh, to see this of course we just need to find one example one case where this does not hold so uh, here is the example if we have a complex valued function f of t is equal to e raised to power iota t and t varies from 0 to 2 pi and uh, if we evaluate this integral from the point 0 to 2 pi so this is the interval 0 to 2 pi and if we evaluate this integral so let's first evaluate this integral so this is the exponential function and we know that uh, there is a function e raised to power iota t divided by iota such that when we take the derivative of this function then we are going to get exactly this uh, integrand so that's why the integral of this function is e raised to power iota t over iota and uh, we use the limits of integration 0 to 2 pi so let's use the limits of integration so this is going to be equal to e raised to power 2 pi iota minus e raised to power 0 okay so and then uh, the answer is going to be equal to 0 because uh, this value is 1 and this value is 1 so they will cancel out each other and that's the value of this integral now uh, the question is can we find some uh, complex number or real number between 0 and 2 pi okay 
So can we find some number between 0 and 2 pi? Let's call it c. Such that the value of this integral uh, can be obtained as f of c multiplied by 2 pi minus 0. Okay, so um, if the mean value theorem uh, holds in this uh, case of complex integrals of complex function as well, then we should be able to find this c. Now let's see why uh, we can't find such c. So if we take any c between 0 and 2 pi, then uh, the modulus of f of c 2 pi minus 0 is going to be equal to modulus of e raised to power iota c 2 pi. And we know that the modulus of e raised to power iota c is going to be equal to 1. So the answer is going to be 2 pi. So whatever real number you take from 0 to 2 pi, the, the modulus of uh, this number for that c is going to be equal to 2 pi. So it will never be equal to 0 because uh, uh, if this number is equal to 0, then its modulus cannot be equal to some non-zero number 2 pi. So that's why there is no such c in the interval 0 to 2 pi such that the mean value theorem holds. So that's one big difference uh, between the real integrals and the integrals of complex valued functions of one variable. So this is uh, the end of our discussion on the integrals of complex valued functions of one variable on the real interval a to b. We discussed how to evaluate these integrals and then we found many similarities between the integrals of real valued functions of one variable and uh, the integrals of complex valued functions of one variable over the real interval a to b. But then there are some, uh, there are some things which are not similar in these two cases. So for example, mean value theorem. Now there is one important thing that you need to notice that we are integrating a very special kind of complex valued functions. So complex valued functions are functions of one variable t. Okay, and uh, this t is basically real variable and not a complex variable. Okay, so that's uh, that's kind of uh, important in this case as well because uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, confuse this case with our main task, which is uh, the integration of any complex valued function along any contour c. So this is a very specialized case where our variable is a real variable t and uh, uh, the interval is a to b. And uh, uh, from now on we will focus on uh, our contour integration.